Good morning. My name is Rosa Soto and I am Executive Director of the LAC USC Medical Center Foundation and the Wellness Center. We're really excited to be here this morning to present um, an important opportunity that the state is providing to um, this incredible campus and to our county. And we are very um, fortunate uh, that for uh, many years, there's been a commitment to transforming the historic General Hospital into an incredible community and housing space. Our supervisor, Supervisor Solis, who's been an incredible champion for the space, calls it the Healthy Village. And you'll hear more from her about um, her incredible efforts to bring together funding uh, to truly transform the community and um, give the space back to our community. On the first floor of this building currently resides the Wellness Center. It is a nonprofit partnership of 23 nonprofit nonprofits working to ensure that our community has housing, food security, chronic disease support, mental health, domestic violence, and many more other services. And so our hope is that we can see um, the, the inspiration that has, uh, that has already occurred on this first floor transform into the rest of the space. To help me um, share the vision of our community um, is an incredible partnership that the supervisor and the Board of Supervisors initiated in 2017, and that is the Health Innovation Community Partnership. Uh, with me today are two of, of those community leaders that are ensuring that our General Hospital's legacy is not just about um, the history, the incredible history of medicine, but also um, the connection to our community. So I'm going to invite Yolanda Duarte and Maria Jose Oliva to come up and share a few words. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm I'm here because um, well I'm the old timer. Um, I'm here because for 60 years I've been an advocate for East LA and the commu surrounding communities, and um, this is by far the single most important project that I have ever and I'm going to say we have ever undertaken. And when I say we, I mean our supervisors specifically the county, elected officials, private partnerships, working together with us to hear us and to, to learn from us and we from them for an innovative approach that's going to address homelessness, constructing affordable housing and creating jobs and continuing to promote our wellness and our health. Um, hopefully maybe even increase our energy independence and so much more. This, this historic hospital has been a beacon of hope and care for our community for just forever as far as I'm concerned and in my heart. But it has the chance now to be that beacon again for generations well beyond me. So um, we're excited to see that this is going to come to fruition. We couldn't have done it without the help of everyone involved thus far. And um, without our supervisor really charging this effort behind us and continuously dogging to make sure that our voices were heard. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce another voice, Maria Jose Oliva. Thank you. Gracias. Buenos dias. My name is Maria Jose Oliva, and I am a member of the Community Parties Advisory Committee. I am a staff here at the Wellness Center, and I was born in East Los Angeles. Um, the General Hospital was a backdrop to my upbringing, and it has seen Angelinos from various backgrounds and intersecting identities. And it was at the center of the awakening of the Chicano movement and the HIV and AIDS epidemic. Now, La Comunidad has esperanza for the future of this monument and the history of the building and this project on its own is a symbol of hope. Okay, can you, can you all hear me? Okay, <laughs> I'm about to finish. Um, here the community hopes that the hospital is brought back to life and that the community meet, needs are met. Um, here stands a future for community cultural wealth for all of its people. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
So you just heard from um, two of our strong leaders that are currently a part of a community priorities task force that is currently evaluating all of our uh, community documents that have been presented publicly through the Board of Supervisors. Um, they are now summarizing uh, the, those priorities to ensure that as we move forward with future development opportunities, there is a, um, a strong commitment to community benefits as part of this this uh, incredible space. So next I want to introduce um, the CEO of, uh, of this incredible facility, um, LACUSC Medical Center and our General Hospital. And um, I can't just say enough about his leadership and his strength. He leads um, with so much grace and commitment, but he also so much represents our community. So he is with our Department of Health Services and here is Jorge Orozco. Thank you, good morning. Um, welcome to our historic General Hospital and welcome to the campus of LEC USC Medical Center. Um, I'm honored to speak to you today about a major investment that will no doubt bring, bring significant benefits not only to how we deliver care here at the hospital, but also to our community. I'm really grateful to the state of California for its commitment to repurpose this historic general hospital into affordable housing units, community services, and job creation. This project will not only provide much needed housing for LA County residents facing homelessness and housing insecurities, but it will also bring new opportunities for workforce development for our local community members. The benefits of this investment go well beyond the tangible improvements. It will also bring hope an opportunity to those who have previously felt left behind and will provide the most vulnerable population a chance to build a better future for themselves and their families. The state investment in repurposing General Hospital into housing recognizes that health is not only about what we could do at the medical center with medical treatments, with surgeries, with medicines, but also addressing the social, environmental, and economic factors that impact a person's overall well-being. This check is an investment in the long-term health and prosperity of our community. And I thank you for the commitment in addressing these important issues. Supervisor Solis, thank you for your uncompromising inspiration. Without a doubt, your plan to convert historic General Hospital into affordable housing is coming to fruition and will serve as a model for other hospitals and county-owned facilities throughout the nation. Thank you, Assemblymember Wendy Carrillo. Your voice, your leadership, your advocacy for our community is so valuable, and we value the state's investment in the development of this historic general hospital into affordable housing units. Thank you so much. Now I want to introduce the two um, incredible leaders that are here um, and the reason we're here today. Um, I want to share that Supervisor Solis's vision um, from the very beginning of our Health Innovation Community Partnership has been one of the community working side by side with the county and working diligently at the state, local, and national level to ensure that this historic monument does not uh, deteriorate, that it becomes that next um, level um, opportunity that is a one time, one in a lifetime um, experience. So I can't say enough about her leadership and um, our Board of Supervisors and so I want to introduce Supervisor Hilda Solis. Thank you. Good morning everyone and welcome to the first district uh, and also I want to um, on this day really uh, thank uh, our Assemblywoman Wendy Carrillo who's really been a uh, champion for us in the state legislature and I want to say that today she is uh, providing us with a needed early on support so that we can continue to carry out this vision of repurposing the old General Hospital and as we move forward help to provide a regional, a regional effort to address homelessness, 
the people that are unhoused, the people that are right now not able to stay in their own homes, people living on the streets, people coming out of the carceral system, and people who live and work around this community. It is, again, I want to understate a regional effort. And this is something that <clears throat> my, sa my staff and I over the last few years have been contemplating, working diligently with the county CEO office, our real estate people, uh, our, our investment people, our financial people to see just how we could repurpose this building. We know it's a historical building, so we can't just tear it down. However, we could save the facade. That's what's important. This is an iconic building. So many, so many decades of service to this community and to the county of Los Angeles. And it continues, I think, to be a beacon of hope for so many people. And I see it as a place of healing because that's what it was originally instituted to do. Take care of the indigent, take care of anyone that couldn't afford to have uh, medical treatment or care. But it also had kind of a storied background as well. I don't want to get into that, but we know that there are things that happen uh, back in our past and what happened here years ago. But we are coming, we're coming to a point of healing now, and we're saying that we can repurpose this building, potentially providing anywhere from 500 to maybe 700 units of housing. And, and much of that will be affordable. And we're looking right now as I speak for developers who are interested in helping us put forward this plan a public-private partnership with the County of Los Angeles to help build this facility out. And right now we've already secured through the county, we've already put in over $120 million. Our goal is to get to another $150 million. But today with the um, check that's going to be made available for us, $50 million from the state legislature, I think will help us garner more support from other entities, including the governor and hopefully also the Biden administration, because this is a priority. This is also in one of the most impacted communities in Los Angeles County and California. It's a high need area. It has environmental degradation. There are high levels of poverty. We know during the pandemic, many of the people in the surrounding communities were, were dramatically impacted impacted and many people lost their lives but this area continued to remain open the wellness center as was spoken about as well as the newer hospital that is adjacent here but this this property here i think is is exciting because many people are starting to understand this vision however it won't happen overnight I'll be very clear on that. It's going to take some time, but I do think that we have people that are interested. Last week, we had over 55 uh, developers attend an RFP workshop. They got to see the inside. They got to see plans of what we envision and how we could work together. But that plan is not just an idea coming from me or my staff. It's coming from the community. And this is a, a hard effort that we've been undertaking for the last, I want to see, three or four years. Meeting after meeting on, on weekends, on evening, and people that volunteered their time to get ideas about what we could do with this facility. So now we're, we're at that moment where we're ready to, to get started. Uh, that RFP is going to go out in January, and hopefully in a matter of... Uh, I'd say a year or so, we're actually going to see someone selected and then we'll start the plan. But I will tell you, this building uh, has to be refurbished inside. As you can imagine, uh, a building that's over almost uh, 90 years old, we have to redo the inside. We have to put in new elevator systems. We have to put new air duct, new electricity, and really kind of really um, transform and make it safe so that we can attract the kind of developers that can come in and then do the work. But this is an ongoing process. Again, I want to say that um, the county has already programmed, already programmed $70 million, and that's $129 million awaiting the redevelopment. We are looking for other resources, as I said. We are also using our own our own how could I say ingenuity because we are creating also an enhanced infrastructure financing district so if you know, understand the concept we can attract businesses here uh, investors and they will get a tax break that money then will stay here to help us repurpose and redo more of the development that's needed here but it's all in that prism of making sure that we have our community our community partners engaged and yes obviously the state legislature and leaders like assemblywoman wendy carillo if it wasn't for her we wouldn't be here right now celebrating this this is a perfect uh, i think christmas gift 
to the residents and community and for their long hard work. And she heard us early on. We had discussions about this and she came and toured the facility. She's been here several times and I personally want to thank her for her leadership and helping us to champion this. It's no easy task to get $50 million out of the legislature and do it with the help of other elected officials that may not reside in the same area but understand the importance of addressing homelessness and affordable housing for people in the county of Los Angeles. So with that, please give her a big round of applause. I want to personally introduce her and thank her for being here with us today and helping us to put this together. Thank you, Assemblywoman Wendy Carillo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Solis Solisa. Buenos dias, good morning. Uh, I'm so honored to be with you all today. My name is Wendy Carrillo and I proudly uh, represent the 52nd Assembly District, proudly grew up in, in Boyle Heights in East Los Angeles. My family has used this hospital uh, way back in, in the 80s and the 90s. And now to be in a position to be able to work with the supervisor to uh, look towards the future as to what is possible and what can be possible, I think is incredibly exciting. Today, on behalf of the California State Assembly and my office, I am proud to announce a historic $50 million state budget allocation for the renovation of the Los Angeles County General Hospital. So, as, as the supervisor uh, mentioned, uh, there, is a, there is a lot of need across LA County and a lot of need across the state of California working with our assembly leadership and Speaker Rendon, our budget staff, as well as the leadership of the Senate, and certainly uh, with the governor's office, we were able to uh, make this allocation a reality. It's taken years to get us here. Uh, I was elected into office in 2018, and this is, or I started in 2018, I was elected in December of 2017. And one of the first meetings that I had was with Supervisor Solis and the future of this hospital and how we could work together on the restorative care village, on the restoration of General Hospital, and really address one of our states and our, our county's biggest uh, crisis, and that is homelessness and housing. So Supervisor, thank you for your leadership and friendship and mentorship and for your vision for what is possible at LA County General Hospital, and most importantly, for your guidance. Uh, the supervisor um, was the assembly member of this community as well, and so working together, we were able to, to make this happen, um, and it didn't happen overnight, and the changes that need to come to General Hospital also won't happen overnight. But there's so much to do. The innovation and reimagining of General Hospital will provide critical behavioral health services along with housing and employment opportunities for vulnerable, uh, vulnerable residents across LA County who find themselves on the brink of homelessness or who are currently experiencing homelessness and are in much need of support and someone uh, willing to lend a helping hand. I want to thank the supervisor as well as her staff, as well as my staff, my district director and my chief of staff who flew down here for, uh, from Sacramento to joining us today and for all the, the, the work that has gone throughout the last few years to make this a reality. Um, you know, $50 million is a, a, a big part of, of the solution and, and certainly funding that is much needed and, and necessary for our community. Based on the 2020 homelessness count, around 162,000 people are homeless throughout the state of California on any given night. The most recent LASA homelessness count uh, let us know that more than 69,000 people are experiencing homelessness on any given night here in LA County, 29,000 of which identify as Latino. That has grown about 26% uh, in our community. It is long overdue that we secure a facility that is a response to the crisis that we are currently living through. And most importantly, it also is quite, uh, there's quite synergy with the homelessness emergency, uh, state of emergency just announced by Los Angeles new mayor Karen Bass and how we're able to ensure that the city, the county, the state, and certainly the federal government addresses this need right here at home. California 
is facing the most dire homelessness crisis amongst any other state in the nation. LA County has a higher percentage of unhoused residents than any other county across California. Skid Row, which is ground zero for our unhoused community, is just a few miles from here. And there is a lot of need for mental health services, substance abuse programs, ensuring that families and children are safe, ensuring that kids are able to go to school and feel safe in the communities that they grew up in and they're not, they're not living in their cars. So there is a lot, of, um, a lot of good work that we get to do together. And I'm so honored to be able to be in a position to, through the budget process, have been able to win this $50 million for our community, and most importantly, work with all of you and all of our community partners to ensure that the needs and the voices of the community of Boyle Heights and the East Side are part of the process of what happens at this beautiful facility. So again, thank you all for all of your hard work. Thank you for your partnership and advocacy at the state level. And again, to all my colleagues and uh, Speaker Rendon, Pro Tem Atkins, and Governor Newsom, thank you for all of your support and, and making sure that LA County is deserving of the funding necessary to address the biggest needs that we have and most importantly find a solution toward our unhoused residents and really bring forward hope amid the holidays of what is possible and what we can do together. Thank you very much. Unas pocas palabras en, en español. Es un gran orgullo estar aquí con ustedes esta mañana orgullosamente representando el uh, Distrito 52 de la Asamblea. Uh, yo crecí en la comunidad de Boyle Heights y el este de Los Ángeles y este hospital ha sido una gran parte de mi familia y las familias a través de esta comunidad. Uh, cada noche a través del estado de California, un porcentaje de personas, aproximadamente 162 mil personas, viven en las calles a través del estado. Unas 69 mil a través del condado de California. 29 mil de esas personas se identifican como latinos, un porcentaje que ha crecido 26% desde el año 2020. Este crisis que estamos viviendo uh, para nuestros uh, vecinos sin hogar, Tenemos que tener soluciones. El nuevo alcalde de la ciudad también ha dicho que es una, un estado de emergencia a través de la ciudad y con el liderazgo la, de la supervisora Hilda Solís, que ha trabajado ya por muchos años en la visión de este hospital y con el liderazgo de la legislatura del estado de California en mi oficina, Hemos ahora tenido una oportunidad de poder, con el presupuesto del Estado, 50 millones de dólares para la renovación del Hospital General Hospital aquí en esta comunidad para poder traer soluciones a el problem, al problema y al crisis más grande que vemos en la ciudad, en el condado y en el Estado de California. Así que es un gran orgullo poder trabajar con la supervisora y todos nuestros líderes a través de la comunidad para que el condado de California y este hospital sea parte de una solución más grande para que a todos los que necesiten apoyo de residencia, apoyo de trabajo, apoyo de atención médica, puedan tener ese apoyo aquí en nuestra comunidad. Muchas gracias por todo lo que hacen a través de nuestras comunidades y el distrito. Y ahora es un día que podemos celebrar una, un, una, un presupuesto, unos 50 millones de dólares para uh, para poder reimaginar qué podemos hacer aquí en este en este hospital y lo más importante poder ayudar a familias a través del condado de Los Ángeles. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Okay. Yes. And now we're going to do a, a photo presentation of this incredible budget allocation of 50 million dollars. So I want to encourage all of our partners to come up. Okay. Yeah, yep, yep. 